into it, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, forgiveness, uh, the action or process of being forgiven, uh, regardless of whether the individual deserves your forgiveness. Now, I know this is a sensitive topic because we can go on and on forever, but uh, if we need to do a part two, we will do so, all right? And feel free to comment, um, you know, down below, or um, even when you go check us out, oh yeah, let me, I meant to say that, like and subscribe us on YouTube, that's very important. All right, thank you for that. All right, so gentlemen, I'm gonna start off with, there's different types of uh, forgiveness uh, in regards to what you need to do if you need to forgive someone, but there's different situations. One situation is relationship. Another situation could be a trauma. Another situation could be family. We got workplace, finances, and even the most important thing is yourself. So I'm going to start off with Charles. Charles, tell me um, the type of forgiveness that you've dealt with that, uh, you know, that you had to address that was more important, that was important to you. Wow. Um, I've actually dealt with forgiveness in a number of different areas. Uh, I'll tell you, the hardest one is self-forgiveness, but um, I, I can give you a, um, a workplace example. Um, mm. Basically, um, it was almost a decade ago. So, I, <laughs> you know, that in and of itself tells you that it's something that was difficult for me to get past. And I had a okay. situation where, uh, you know, my career, you know, was going along um, extremely well. I had gotten right. along with um, all the bosses I ever had in life. And okay. there was this one individual that, uh, for whatever reason, they just weren't a fan. You know what I mean? Mm. You just run into those individuals that, oh, for yeah. whatever reason, you just don't connect with. Well, um, this individual was higher up in the company than I was, and my career was going along fine. And I found myself, due to a reorg, suddenly I was reporting to this individual. And I was like, okay. son of a son of a. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when all the BS started. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, long story short, you know, this individual just made things very difficult for me. I mean, okay. you know, like I said, I was highly successful in my position. I'm not going to name the company uh, for obvious reasons, but uh, things were going uh, very well. I was so successful in my position as it relates to the incentive program that I was actually making more money than my boss was. Okay. Mm. Uh -oh. okay. I mean, I okay. was going to the Grammys. I was taking exotic vacations, things of that nature. And all these okay. things were being funded by the company that I was working for. So I right. guess this person just um, wasn't having that and decided they wanted to modify, uh, just modify the comp plan. They wanted to reorganize my, my, uh, so he the, wanted to reorganize it just so you couldn't benefit? Pretty much. Pretty wow. much. Okay. You know, it, it was a she. So <clears throat> okay. long story short, uh, there uh -oh, was some, that's another thing. It, you know, when you're in a leadership <laughs> position, uh, people are going to take shots at you constantly. Right. So there are always drummed up charges that are coming up, right? People just filing complaints because you fired them or whatever the situation may be. Any other boss that I had previously would have just brushed most of that crap off. Right. This individual used that as an excuse to come after me. And I just started documenting and every conversation, every change that was made. Long story short, um, I turned into a whistleblower and this person ended up getting fired from the company. Wow. Okay. Wow. That's deep. But, but in so doing, it, it did harm to me. You know, it's right. all my career. I was all of a sudden, I was the whistleblower. And you know what people think about whistleblowers, right? Gotcha. You get oh, yeah. eyes, you know, and sort of, you know, so my, my, my career became dormant. I went from being on the fast track to being one of the presidents of the company to all of a sudden being stuck at the director level. Gotcha. Okay. And uh, that continued for like a decade until, you know, finally, you know, I retired from the company. But up until that point, um, you're, you're talking about a situation that really impacted me. Not only did it impact me, it impacted my family. You know, you're talking well, about the livelihood, things of that nature. You know what I'm saying? So let me ask you, let me yeah, ask you a question, Charles. So with everything that was involved in this whole situation, how did you release yourself from that emotional you know, situation? Like, how did you come out of it? Bro, let, let me tell you, it has taken years, the better part of a decade to get over that. Because like I said, it's the impact, not only to me as an individual, but 
to my family lifestyle, you know, all those things. So um, it, it was tough to get past, but finally I just had to uh, really decide, just make a conscious decision to let it go because that's okay. where the freedom comes from. That right. is where I could finally separate myself from this individual and what they did to me by just re releasing them and releasing myself from it. So that that's what happened. Okay. All right. I appreciate that, man. That's good stuff, man. I appreciate it. Steph Lover, you up next. Let me ask you, uh, what type of uh, forgiveness um, have you dealt with? What, what, what stands out to you? I tell you, Mike, um, I am probably, it's hard for me to forgive. You know, it, it really is. Um, but I, I, I will forgive. I will forgive sometimes. <laughs> I ain't gonna forget shit. <laughs> yeah, <that's what> <laughs> uh, all right, all right. You know, Here's the over there. Oh, yeah, Fa yeah. Facebook family, uh, that's an inside joke that me and my man been dealing with for years. Don't worry yeah. about it. We'll get to it. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> here's a great story. I was dating this girl when we were back at Morgan State University, and uh, Wayne probably remembers her. The other guys may or may not, but anyway, I was dating this girl, staying over her spot a, a few times. I decided to go to, I either came up to Wayne's house up at, uh, in uh, Mamaroneck or up to Mike. I left my car down in Baltimore. You know, and it, you know, it was a 84 Subaru, black, with oh, my, yeah, name, with my yeah. name on it. All right, so you know, <laughs> I, I, I was Big Willie. Anyway, so I leave my car down there with her. She sneaks a boyfriend from the past down to her apartment and drives around with him oh, in the car. Hell no. Nah. Oh, yo, you <laughs> don't remember this story. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. I remember hearing about it, but yo, yo, she was driving around with him in your whip. Yes, in my whip. Oh, hell while, no. while I was up there, either I, I was I was either in New York or in Connecticut. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and I come back and find out about a week later, it slipped out that this dude you know, was riding around my car with my so-called girlfriend. I was like, okay, all right, all right. So, you know, needless to say, uh, you know, broke off the relationship and eventually I forgave her by, you know, finding somebody else. And, uh, but but I'll never forget it. Mm, that's deep. That yeah, is yeah. deep. I don't remember because that now, one, now Steph, what, for real. Let me ask you a question real quick, Steph. At what yeah. point did you decide to forgive her? Like, how long did it take? Uh, it, it took about a year. Um, okay. Yeah, it okay. took about a year because we still work together. Um, cool. On, on on the campus, so you know, I'm like, okay, that's cool, that's cool. And then I ended up right. starting to date somebody else. So right. you know, I eventually right. forgave her, and it, it was a it was a great lesson learned. You All know right. that you can't trust everybody. And, nah, you know, that's, and that's true. You have such a big heart. Yo, yeah. you good brother, man. Because yeah. you with, with your with your military background, I I'm I sure I'm, I, I thought you might have grabbed a sniper or something, but no, just... no, 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 no. She she wasn't worth she wasn't worth that. <laughs> okay. All right. That's Fair not enough. A nice thing to say. But but that's what I like you listen, but that's what I like about it, Steph. You 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 know when to release yourself, and that's a good thing. And that's a positive thing. Now, thank you for that, Steph. I appreciate it. I didn't know that I forgot that story. That yeah. was deep. Yeah, I don't yeah, clear yeah. bits and pieces of it, but it, it, it yeah. kind of. Okay. Kinda. Steph, bring oh, yeah. back memories. Don't be bringing back memories, Steph. You know, I'm going to have to go grab <laughs> yeah, I don't forget anything. <laughs> All right. Next up, Chuck Nice. Yes, sir. All right. The different, uh, the, the, the different types um, of forgiveness. What, what type stands out to you? Forgiving myself. Okay. You know, I mean. For wearing uh, those yellow just, pants in the club. All right, wow. Okay. Okay, <laughs> now. All right, all right. All right. So, so we forgive. That's the, oh, yeah. okay, that's, you yeah. took the first shot, yeah. but yeah. you know I got I got about five or six in the chamber. Oh, uh -huh. what, what you got to no. say, Wayne? What? I said we forgive you. Whatever. We, we had to <laughs> walk with you. Well, we couldn't miss him. And, and that that's that's brotherly love, right? Because y'all still Listen, walk with me. Y'all can say, hey, damn yellow yellow pants pants on what? Hey, Chuck. They can say whatever. It looked good on you. You damn right. I wore them. I rocked them too, bastard. My my bad. I didn't. I didn't mean to interrupt, bro. Go ahead. That's all right. Go, Don't ahead, worry. go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Go ahead, Chuck. But nice. yeah, for, forgiving myself, man. Um, you know, why? Uh, me, why? me and my father. Me and my father. God, man, just you know. Um, can't tell you why. Um, don't know if he 
didn't think I was living up to his expectations. But as his son, uh, or any son who wants to, you know, please his father, or please his dad, you know, you you go, you know, you do what you got to do. And so I thought right. I was doing what I needed to do. And then it just came a point where I realized, fuck, I've done. What else can I do? Right. So is it me? So I, you know, I went through this whole self-examination phase and and all this. And you know me, I'm, I'm pretty private. I don't, you know, I, I just deal with stuff. I deal with it. And so I just realized that, no, nah, it, it wasn't me. Right. You let, know? let me and ask I you a question. To, yeah. Now, when did you uncover your anger? Like, how did you, when did you have to uncover it in order for you to forgive? You have to start somewhere. So when did you uncover it? When did you know you had to uncover it to move on? Um, the more that I tried to get close, bond, um, it seemed like the further or more distant that he got. Um, and I, I didn't know why. Um, uh, and, you know, it, eventually some things surfaced that made me realize why. Right. But, you know, uh, by this time, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a father. Uh, my whole purpose in life has changed. You know, it's not about me anymore. It's about my my daughter. And then, you know, I just start having these thoughts where, you know, the way he treated me, I could never treat uh, another human being, let, let alone my child. Mm. And then I just start, you know, I'm cross-referencing now. It's like everything right. is just, and I'm like, you know what? It's not me. Right. I, I, you know, I did what everything I could. Um, um, I just had I had a moment of clarity. Call it what you want. Some right. people call it a, a see a significant emotional event. I don't, right. you know. Um, but I just had a moment where I was like, you know what? Fuck this. Right. Um, he, I've done everything to be a good son, right. and I got crapped on. Why? So then I realized it wasn't me. I'm a good. I'm a good dude. I'm enough. And I, I, you know, I just, I, I took that negative energy and I, I, I tried to make it positive. And, you know, everything that I thought that my father would have done either for me or to me, I, I, I would say to myself, if that's what he would have done, I'm going to do the exact opposite. And because I've done that, I've kind of made it, it's a conscious, unconscious thing now, but because I've done that, um, I've been a pretty damn decent dude. Okay. You know? No, we know that. Um, so, I, so yeah. So well, I had to learn is, to forgive. I had to learn to forgive myself. You know, and, and let that stuff go. You know, I I was I'm okay. I was a good dude. It, right. was, it wasn't me. It was him. And just keep doing what you're doing. That's that's me. That's what I did. Let me let me ask you one quick question. We'll finish it out. I know. Uh, when you had to release yourself from that situation, do you think that had an effect on how you? How you fathered your kids? How you? I mean, how you um, dealt with oh, your kids? Yeah. The, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Just uh, two days ago, um, my daughter Tiffany was in the kitchen, and I said, "I love you." She said, "I love you too, Dad." You know, just normal. And I said, "Do you know why I tell you I love you?" I said, "I've told you this before, but you know, I'm asking you again. Do you know why I tell you that I love you?" And she, she looked a little confused. And then she re remembered, she said, because your father never told you. Mm. I make it a point to tell my kids as often as possible that I love them. Because That's I deep. want them to know it. I want them to hear it from me. Right, I don't want right. them to, to think maybe he did or there was a, an occasion here or there that kind of made me realize that he did love me. Hell yeah. no. My father never told me that he loved me. Okay. He, did, he showed me in, in some ways, but he never told me that he loved me. And I, I made a conscious decision that I'm going to make sure that my children know, they understand clearly that I love them and um, and that they need to pass this on to their children. That's all right. So, That's all right, brother. Good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that, man. I didn't know about that part. You know, I know we talk and so, a lot of things come out on the podcast. No, but, uh, no. I'm sorry. Don't be, don't be sorry. No, no, no. Because, no, no, because, no, no, because what, what doesn't kill you that. makes you stronger. Yeah, all right. Well, right. And that's my that. that's my testimony. That's my that's right. that's my thing. Right. And um, no. if anybody's listening to this and it's, you know, take it, 
and and use it. But I don't ever I don't ever want anybody to feel sorry or think no. that I just don't talk about it. Y'all know no. me. Y'all never heard it. Y'all my, right. the closest people to me. Y'all never heard this. I never talk right. about my father. Right. As a matter right. of fact, um, I think Charles found out on a humble that my okay. father passed away. All right. Remember? Well, I'm glad. I'm, I did. Well, I'm sure glad. Did. Listen. Yeah. Well, listen, I'm, I'm glad we were able to get, you know, like I said, I, I think the biggest thing about this podcast, while we get together, sometimes we're able to, um, you know, let out some things that have been bound up inside of us. And, 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 and I think that's what makes it work sometimes. But I appreciate you coming forth with that, man. And like I said, I think anybody now that you that's said listening, that too, just know you're enough. Yep, if you don't take yep, anything and, away from what I just said, understand you are enough. No doubt. No doubt. All right. Well, thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Wayne Nice. What up? Wow, Talk that's, to me. That's, that's, different not, that's hard to follow, brother. That's a hard act to follow. Well, but I'm saying there's different types. There's different yeah, yeah. types of forgiveness. And so tell us what what, what is the one of the types of forgiveness that stood out to you and yeah. how how'd you handle it? How'd yeah, you I uh think, I think I'll go a little bit differently uh than others? Yeah. Um I think for me it's gonna be it's kind of a combination of financial and self-forgiveness. So the, the way that I feel that they're connected is, you know, each of us at the age that we are, you know, we, we, we've been in this workforce for quite a while. And, and, you know, you guys know, I kind of, I'm kind of like a numbers dude. So like, you know, you, you kind of know how much money you're making, you know how much money, and then, you, you know, when you look at the end of the day, <laughs> where <it> at? <laughs> Where'd it go? Right. So, but, right. but it is a lot of things that you've done or that I've done. I'm sorry, we're talking about my <laughs> forgiveness. There's a lot of things that I've done uh, I've burnt a ton of money, you know, and it's like, when you look back, it just like kills you. And so it's hard, you know, it's for me to forgive myself about it's gone. What you're going to do about it, right? Just keep it moving. And so like, when we talked before about all these different types of forgivenesses and, and having a hard time forgiving and not being able to forgive and stuff like that, when you can't forgive whatever the situation is, that shit is for you to deal with. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you have a problem with somebody and then they, uh, you know, and, and you ain't talking to that person or whatever, and that just eats you up inside, they've gone yeah. on with their life. They ain't even thinking right. about you. Yep. So it's, if you want to keep moving forward or whatever it is that you're doing, you need to, you need to kind of forgive yourself. And again, money is a big thing, right? And so right. nobody wants right. to say, yo, I made X amount of dollars. I should have X amount of my savings. Where's it at? Right. right. And, and, and so so I think financial is a big thing. I think people beat themselves up with that a lot. I know I have. And, and I so, have. Yeah, no I, doubt. Yeah, I'm still beating myself up, man. I didn't get Me into too. Bitcoin before. <laughs> 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 exactly. Exactly. You know, all yeah. these missed opportunities and all these things. And so now, you know, yo, a ton of people in their 50s, whatever, they trying to plan a retirement. They're like, man, I can't go nowhere. Yeah, I got to right. keep I got to keep rocking. So right. I'm just saying for me, that's something that I've, I've been working through as I, I'm making, getting through different milestones in my life. You know, money just seems to keep going out, but I'm, I'm hoping to sl slow that floodgate sooner than later. So, so you've been forgiven. The, so you've been forgiven the Nixon 73 way. Is that what you're saying? Wow. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. I, don't I, I don't forget I, the I Knicks. I was wondering who was going to throw the Knicks up first. No, I ain't forgiven them yet. The Knicks. You, you haven't forgiven them yet? <laughs> I'm working on it. It's, I'm working on it. But see, that's why I can't heal. That's why I'm still a fan. Okay. I can't heal. Right. See, if I was healed, hey. I'd move on to someone else. Hey. I'm right there with you. I'm a giant fan, so it's like a roller coaster going up and down. So I'm with you. I understand that part. And Steph, I appreciate you for bringing the Knicks up in every conversation, bastard. I knew it was coming. You had to know it was coming. <laughs> All right. Well, listen. For the sake of time, I'm going to go into mine real quick. Uh, my um type of forgiveness I had to do, I think it was more of a, uh, my release was uh, family trauma. And it was trauma because I lost my mom when I was young and I lost my father. And, uh, you know, I had to hear these stories about how, you know, the type of people they were, this, that, and the other. Nobody really gave me the reason what happened behind the scenes and stuff. And when somebody actually sat me down and finally told me what happened, um, I think that was my release because I always held a grudge to different people because I they didn't tell me the truth about what happened and when some when someone was actually able to sit me down and talk to me and let me know what happened and it wasn't my fault and the reason why you know everything was disjointed between two families it was almost like a Romeo and Juliet situation 
you know, and, and it was crazy. But once somebody broke it down to me, um, I was able to uncover my anger. Um, and I decided to forgive a lot of people. And, um, and I started working on forgiveness because, you know, it, it had an effect on me, how I treated myself, how I treated uh, other people. And, um, and I think that was my release, you know, emotionally for me to do that. And I'm not going to go too deep in it because I want to present uh, some questions to the Facebook uh, family slash community. Um, and before question you do number that, one. Before you yes, do sir. that, Mike, real quick to everybody that's out there watching this, we need you guys to go to our YouTube page. Go to our YouTube channel and subscribe right now. If you got to jump out and jump back in, we'll still be here. We need you to go to our YouTube channel and subscribe right now. All the new subscribers at the end of the podcast, we're, join us in our private group. And we're going to choose a winner from the new subscribers to send merchandise to. All right. But you got to be in our private group after the uh, after the show to win the merchandise. All right. So go to our YouTube channel right now. Thanks, guys. All right. Come on in. All right. Now, this question is going to present, be presented to the panel, but it's also going to be uh, presented to the uh, Facebook community. And number one question is, who's more forgiven, men or women? And why do you think so? And I'll start off. Let's go from the bottom to the top. Let's start off with uh, my man, Wild Wayne. Wayne, what do you think? Who do you think more is forgiven, men or women? And why do you think so? Wow. Wow. Well, you know, I'm going to say dudes are more forgiven. OK. Um, OK. I mean, no, I mean, uh, maybe that's not fair. So let me say it like this. If we talk about relationship, definitely a dude is more forgiven. Right. Mm. Um, in, in other areas, it could be different. I beg, I beg to differ, but go ahead. Me too. Why you, why you said, uh, really? <laughs> nah, hey, I, I agree, have you had, have, have I agree you had wholeheartedly. Wayne is absolutely, absolutely right. Culture. Have you had a woman pissed off at you? Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, I had a lot of them. I had three sisters. And when, did, and when did that stop? It never stops. <laughs> exactly. It never stops. That's it. Exactly. You know, men, men have the ability to compartmentalize. Okay. So if there's an issue, with your lady, you know, I could be asking for some booty like five minutes later. You know what I'm saying? Not uh -huh. her. Not her. I'm still going to be hearing something about, you know, whatever took place like uh, over a decade ago. You know what I'm saying? So, nah, I, I mean, he's I absolutely right. My, I always find myself defending Whoa. ladies. Oh my hey, God. Hold on, hold on. I thought it was on me. It's on it's you. It's on you, Wayne. Yeah, I mean, yeah, hey. but I mean, hey. Chuck, okay, Chuck but, don't jump the line. Chuck, don't jump the line. I have to tase you, brother. <laughs> now, nah, for real though, but but seriously, um, yo, they got you know a scorned woman. Come on, man, that's just a problem. That's a yeah. problem. You might have to relocate. Yeah. Witness protection program, you know. But uh, but seriously, it's it's uh. <laughs> now, but that, that's what I think. I think women women have a harder time forgiving. They don't forgive and they don't forget. Neither one. Like I said before, for a dude, if you want to move on, you got to get, you know, you got to forgive and keep it moving. Okay. So All far, right, commenters Trump, just said women. So. Oh, okay. Hold on. Hold I on. Save right. that, Steph. Listen, save that tidbit, Steph. We need that. Okay. Save that. Right. Chuck, yeah. what do you think? Who is more forgiving, men or women? And why do you think it, so? It depends on the person. It depends on the circumstance. A whole bunch of factors. But I mean, shit, I st I'm still holding a grudge from the third grade. So I mean, <laughs> so I'm just hey, saying hey, it, it, it depends. Yo, it depends. That's all. Hey, you That's stole it. your annihilators. Somebody hey, stole your annihilators. Hey. Okay, first of all, it wasn't annihilators. All right, don't get me started. See, you you bring you bringing up old shit. I'm starting to get mad. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Steph. Steph, who's all more right. forgiving, Steph? Men or women? And why do you think so? I think men. I'm more forgiven because, you know, if a woman screws up uh, or whatever, pisses a man off, all she got to do is say, baby, dinner's on the stove. You want me to fix mm. your plate? You know, or, <laughs> oh, baby, I'm going to take, oh, matter of fact, I, I think, Chuck, you brought up one of those, hey, before you say that, the last thing, I'm going to jump in the shower. And then you're like, oh, damn, <laughs> damn. All right, let, let me back up. Got what you was mad about, right? Yeah, exactly. Got what you was mad about, Steph. Exactly. Yeah, so the power, Steph, of, the P, the power take, of the P. All the take. I plead hey, the fifth. Hey, listen, 
Stefan, Stefan got the weakness for the drunken ribeye. Once it's out there, it's a done deal. <laughs> <laughs> all, 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 hey, all Stefan got to do is smell the marinated pineapple. Like, oh yeah. shit. Uh, okay, whatever. Yes, whatever. It. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's true. That's Somebody true. just said that's not forgiveness. That's just moving on. Oh, okay. Mm. All right. Mm. Okay. Well, what, what, what they, okay, they said just moving on. Is that that? Is it that easy? Anybody in the Facebook? I think I think you're just trying to get. I mean, with that example that was just given about you know getting your attention taken somewhere else, I think it's just really about you just kicking the can down the road. Like whatever the problem is, it's still there. You just you're gonna get gonna deal with it in the morning. It's one thing kicking the can down the road, but is it empty or is it full? (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) hey Charlie Rock. Charlie Rock, what say you about this? Who's <laughs> bro? I mean, I I, I, I agree wholeheartedly with uh, Wayne. You know, men are definitely more forgiving, no doubt about it. I think initially we might get angrier, but uh, again, we have the ability to compartmentalize. You know, what I'm saying one thing has absolutely nothing to do with the other. We could be upset over here, and we could be good over here. Where holistically, a woman is just not. You know, that's, that's not how she's built. You know, she's going to be feeling things in her heart, in her emotions, in her soul, in her demeanor, the whole nine yards. And that is some stuff that unfortunately could like last for, for years, bro, if you get on the wrong side of a woman. So, you know, my thing is, uh, it, it's definitely men being more forgiving. No doubt. Mm. Okay. Well, I think um, that, I think that I think from my experience, I, I think that women are more forgiven. And from what I looked at and what I looked up in different things, I guess it comes from, uh, you know, them being raised to, to have a forgiving attitude, uh, you know, so they can be more empathetic, so they can pr- uh, prioritize the relationship. What do you guys think about that? Why women, women are more forgiven. Do you think that's a reason that they're taught that at a young age to, to pro- I, I, you I think, think? That, I think that's valid. I okay. think that's valid. Okay. What you about know, you, Steph? Um, you think that? I, I, no, go ahead, I'm sorry, Chuck. Go ahead, finish up. Oh no, no, that was it. I'm, Okay, you know, I, you, I, really, I, I really think it depends on the women. You know, I've been married a couple of times, and the first nah, one, not you, could, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, no, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, say it ain't so, say yeah, it ain't so. Yeah, I, I, I've done it a couple of times. Anyway, the first one uh, was not forgiven. Oh my God, hell no! But my my last, the one I'm going to the grave with, oh, she's she's forgiven. I mean, but it's just because she learned that she had to be because she didn't want to be something that, you know, she's seen growing up. So you know, she's forgiven, forgiven all the time. That so it really depends on the one. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. No question. No question. We're having uh, a oh, saying hood practice. Ain't gonna, you ain't going to gloss over that. That, yeah. that woman is a saint. Yeah. 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 The deal with me. Your ass. Well, I was talking, I was talking, <laughs> I was talking to someone, I was talking to someone earlier today. Um, and and we were talking about uh, you threw I threw forgiveness out there, and they say that if you forgive, you can't be bringing it up later on. You have to really forgive yourself. You have to release that negative energy from yourself in order to you to really forgive. You can't say I forgive you and then ten years later bring it up. So Facts. I, I mean, if somebody that. says that to you, uh, that I forgive you, and then ten years <clears throat> later they bring it up, I mean, I think that can have an effect. You know. On, on the situation or cause arguments, right? A- oh, absolutely. No As a matter of fact, that, that tie is back to what Charles said on the last episode about, you know, something about I'm not my past. You know, so mm. don't don't judge okay. me. So yeah, Mike, you, you spot on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right, I, cool. I would cool. say, go ahead, Mike. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, go, brother. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, yeah, if because if you haven't forgiven, if it comes up, if it comes up, right, you really have to deal with that issue, whatever that issue is, and you saying, I, right, I'm good, and you, you know, if everybody's walking away from that situation and thinking they're good, you can't bring that up next month, next year, or after that, because it's like you're supposed to be past that. Because now, if you're harboring those feelings and those different things like that, now, you know, you're just waiting for a reason to snap. Yeah, Yo, because you ain't get so- past that last joint. Right. So right. One, one of our viewers, um, they decided to um, pull out the psychology book. And they said compartmentalization is a subconscious psychological defense mechanism used to avoid cognitive dissonance dis- <laughs> or the <laughs> mental discomfort and anxiety caused by a person having conflicting values, cognitive, cognitive 
Emotions will lead to decision within themselves. I, I, Steph, I, I know that was a woman that did that. Hey, yeah. Steph, can, we, can, you not, can you not shout out Morgan anymore with that kind of reading bullshit? Like that? <laughs> Hey, I was not going to pull him yesterday. <laughs> Compartmentalization. Yeah, they got. Hey. they got. They look it up. Hey, yo, hey, look, look. Y'all, y'all leave Floyd Mayweather alone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, right. I felt like I was all in right, Jason Hall. Okay. All right. Well, listen. Whoever, whoever uh, looked that up, we appreciate it. Yeah, and, we definitely uh, appreciate you know, the like feedback. Said, yeah, we definitely appreciate the feedback. We need that. Uh, number two. Let's move on. Number two for the sake of time. All right. This goes out to my to my panel. And but also to the uh, Facebook community, does forgiving someone make you appear or feel weak or stronger? Why or why not? Mm. I'll start off with Charles. I'll start with Charles first. Is that all right, Charlie Rock? Coming yeah, to you. Yeah, no problem, man. Um, you know, we all know what the right answer is, but in terms of how we feel about things, it's almost like the difference between Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and how they dealt. With, with issues. And to be honest with you, I'm more on the Malcolm X side of things. You know, I, I struggle with that. You know, it's like when you are victimized by somebody, you, your, your natural instinct is to want to strike back and to want to get some revenge and want to see them hurt because they hurt you. You know what I mean? So, you know, sitting back and allowing someone to victimize you you not doing anything about it, but you're forgiving them for what they've done. You know, that, that's, that, that's tough for me, man. I mean, that, that's, a, that's, that's, that's very difficult. Don't get me wrong. I know that there is strength in not striking back, but, but damn it, <laughs> you know, when, when you takes, are, when you are in it, it, it absolutely yeah. does, bro. So I, I, I struggle with that. It feels, one. It's some, okay. it feels unnatural sometimes. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, well, it's, as, especially, as a man, it, feel, it feels unnatural when you, you're violated. Your, your normal tendency is to strike back. Especially uh, if it's public, if it's a public oh, violation. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Just, just imagine that something hurt. happening that to hurt. you that your, your family's <clears throat> aware of, your friends are aware <laughs> of, you know, yeah. your, your kids, something happens to you in front of your kids, and then you have to sit there and, and say, hey, watch dad forgive this mm-hmm. individual that, you know, Bit slapped your father. I mean, come on now. That okay. that's um. Well, that hey. hey so, so hey, that goes back. That, hey, Charles, we just had a flashback to uh uh demasculation or mm-hmm. emasculation. Mm-hmm. Let me say emasculation of oh, of, of my the man. So so, huh? so, so oh. Charles, what what you're saying is Josh Norman should go up to Derrick Henry and forgive him for that <laughs> stiff arm <laughs> because he got embarrassed on the football field. <laughs> oh. Oh, only seven, seven, seven. Nah, he should have got some out. get back the next time he had the opportunity. That's that's what I'm saying. That was yeah. disrespectful. But yeah, I think, to be up. honest, that was disrespectful. <laughs> so, but listen to this though. I think I think whether I mean definitely forgiving is strength, right? But I think it's always to what Charles is saying. It's always the situation or the relationship that you're dealing with. If you're dealing with a coworker that is your peer, your relationship is going your reaction is gonna be different than when you're dealing with the relationship that's your boss. Right, right at work, right. right? So that's just a different situation. Now, if you're dealing with a relationship like uh, your lady, and this is someone who you you know you really into, as opposed to someone you just kicking it with, you know what I'm saying? So your responses are going to be different based upon how invested you're in this or how invested you want to be. That's what I'm thinking. But but Wayne, I'm, I mean, you yourself have said on numerous occasions, you know, don't how many? Me. Nah, how many L's you gonna take? <laughs> How many L's are you going to take? You, you are absolutely right. right. You're absolutely right. And, and, and I think the answer is you take less, you take less, you take no L's if the person means nothing to you. Well, I look at it like this. If you take two L's and you put them together, it's a W. So you're going to get a win somewhere. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> no, but, but seriously. <laughs> hey, 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 Chuck, put it out there on the jet. Yeah, Charles is right. Ball. He said, you know, he said I was going to do it. You know, I was going to break up, break it up a little <laughs> bit, you know, to have a little right. comedy. But listen, when it comes to, I think uh, it, it, it boils down to the old adage, don't take my kindness for weakness. If I forgive you, you know, my whole thing is to forgive you and release that, uncover that anger so it gets out of my system. And so I can be released from my emotional prison, my brother. So my thing is that you just have to follow through with it and let it go. And if you don't let it go, 
um, then, then you're going to constantly have an issue. It's going to be festering. It's going to, it's going to anxiety, anger, all that stuff is going to eat away at you. And it's going to affect you, uh, affect you, uh, emotionally, psychologically, you name it. So the, I, I guess the thing, what I'm trying to say is that if you do forgive someone, there's different levels and different steps to forgive someone. But I, I mean, I think you need to, if you're going to do it, you need to really go full throttle with it, even though it's tough, do it anyway to get it out, you know, get it out of your system. Because I, I think in the long run, it's going to make things a little better. Hopefully, you know, I, I like I said, I, I can't speak for everybody. I know that, uh, you know, sometimes you have to put some work in to get things done. Anyway, uh, did anybody, oh, did I, did I miss, did I miss you stuff? In regards to that nah, question? No, nah, no, nah, we can move on. We can move yeah. on. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, my thing is that uh, what are we doing for time? How are we on time? Uh, we're at uh, close to uh, 40 minutes, Mike. All right. Well, listen. Well, we, we, we can take a station identification break. I just want to talk about our merch. We got merch, y'all. We got merch on jbedpob.com. I want y'all to check it out. And like I said, go up in there and search around a little bit. If you think it's too expensive, let me know because I had the price gun and I might have hit the wrong number. So if you see something for 47, we might have dropped it down to 37. Holla at your boy. You know what I mean? Holla at us. You know what I mean? Because you, you know, deals? I know you, Huh? I said you making deals. Hey, listen, man, we got a real and deal because listen, we, we trying to start, we started from the bottom, now we're here. That's all I'm gonna say. Hilarious. All right. So where we uh you said we got 40 minutes left, Steph. We're good. Yeah, we're, 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 good. we're good for another question, Mike. Okay. All right. Well, I, I think when it comes to, I think maybe we'll give us a, what do you think? We got time for a little drop the mic? Oh, no yeah. doubt. No yeah. doubt. If you don't have another question, no doubt. I don't have anything per se. Um, I know That's we French. talked about two, two questions. <laughs> Say it again. I was messing with you. I'm sorry. Go ahead, brother. So, you no. know what, Mike, if you don't have yeah. anything yeah. else, you know, I know Steph has been kind of looking at the, the messages that we're getting, but, um, you know, yeah, I, Steph, read I, some I, of the message, Steph. I'm taking a look too. So get, Steph, you want to shout out a couple of the messages? Yeah, we got there? Well, you know, one, one, um, one um, fan wrote forgiveness is not an L. Also someone wrote forgiveness doesn't mean the relationship doesn't change. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. And then forgiveness allows you to set new boundaries. Yeah, oh, that, all right. I like that. Yeah, I yeah. like that. That that that's hitting right there. Boundaries, because you know you might have to reestablish new boundaries. Who knows? You, you, you know? absolutely so have to establish new boundaries when somebody violates you. You, you oh yeah, you have to, man. I mean, there there's no other way forward other than I mean, it's if you're in a relationship and someone violates the relationship and you decide to forgive them then the person's right. You know, there, there is no L associated with that. You know, that, that's a win scenario for the relationship. Uh, but what has to happen is that the boundaries most definitely have to be redefined because that same type of hurt can't continue to happen and, and, right. and, and for the relationship to win. It, it just can't. Okay. Okay. What else, what, what else we got from the listeners or the viewers? Go, go ahead, Wayne. I was going to say, uh, someone had mentioned, I wasn't able to scroll all the way through, but uh, someone mentioned that um, forgiveness, for, like you said, that the forgiveness is not an L. They also mentioned that the forgiveness is for you. Yeah. True. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think forgiveness is also, um, and once again, um, you know, it might be an upcoming guest, but we were collaborating a little bit and uh, she was saying about that negative energy. You know, uh, we do things that we have to, uh, I learned today you know, from a possibly upcoming guest that, you know, forgiveness, uh, we have to forgive ourselves every day for some of the things that we've done wrong, you know, that we've done wrong to someone to, or even to ourselves that we don't even pay attention to, you know, right. you know, based on, based on what she does, you know, what, how she follows different things, her mantra or whatever she does. So that was very interesting to me because now it makes me take a look back and say, what did I do today? And rehash what I, what did I do? Did I, did I think something wrong? Did I do something wrong? You know, so it's making me more aware of what I'm doing, how I'm carrying myself. So I, I thought that was pretty cool. And I, I think we're going to, uh, her and I are going to touch base a little more because I, I think that's something that we can bring to the table in regards to uh, the podcast. Now, I know I said I didn't have a question, but I did have uh, four steps of forgiveness. Um, and maybe one of you guys can take each one. Um, four steps of forgiveness. We got uncover, uh, uncover your anger. Uh, one is decide to forgive. 
the next one is work on your forgiveness. And the one that I was bringing up and that we were talking about, you know, when people releasing themselves, release yourself from the emotional prison. What does that, you know, let's just take that one question. Let's start off with drum call, please. Uh, Wayne, what does releasing yourself from emotional prison, what does that mean to you? It means allowing yourself to move forward, right? Because okay. if you're locked into uh, whatever trauma, whatever situation, you know, you're kind of standing still. It doesn't let you go forward. So you got to cool. release so you can keep it moving. All right, cool. Chuck Nice, I'm coming to you. What does sure. releasing yourself from emotional prison? Now, you've already, <laughs> you did more than release. You did you did a whole lot today. But I'm saying if you have any more left in the tank, um, how do you release yourself from an emotional prison? And now it doesn't have to be a big prison. It could be, you know, a federal prison where, you know, it ain't that tight. Or so what do you think? <laughs> um, I don't, I, I try not to get uh, too wound up. I don't, to me, your emotions, anger, stuff like that, you know, you can't make me angry. I can only allow myself to get angry. Mm. And that's just kind of the way I look at things. Um, Y'all have talked to me enough to know that I'm pretty mild tempered and I just I don't allow things to get to me uh, like that. Um, I don't give my emotions away freely. Um, okay. I just I, I mean, it's I'm not a, a, a sensei or a guru or anything. It's just that I've come to the realization that I'm the only one that can uh, um, manage me my my emotions and stuff like that in other words <clears throat> mike you and i having a disagreement or whatever you know you, there's no shouting match or yelling i mean i i hear you brother i recognize you i hear i'm old, i'm a little older now maybe that's what it is yeah. maybe i'm a little more yeah. seasoned and i'm in touch with my uh but uh yeah i just I, I i truly believe that your emotions are yours to give away it's not for you to make me mad i only only i can get mad or allow myself to get angry. Okay. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Kind of all over love. the place, but that's my look at it. All right. No, that's fine. That's <clears> fine. <throat> no, that was great. Hey, Steph. Now I know you said it took you a year to forgive this young lady. Um. So when 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 I say release yourself from emotional prison, or uh, maybe that's too deep prison, but when you released yourself from that emotional weight, like when did you know? Like what made you just say it? Like when you forgave him, like what made you just do it? Like what? I, I knew later on in life, my life was probably going to be better than hers. And, okay. and I, I knew that she messed up. And it actually gave me a little more satisfaction to know that she messed up. She was chasing this one thing that really didn't want her, but wanted to use her. And she had a good thing. And she let it go by being selfish. So it gave me satisfaction. Okay. And therefore, I was able to forgive her for her past transgression. Okay. All right, cool. I appreciate that. Charlie, Charlie Rock. Wait, I know. Hey, man, listen. Uh, we're on a roll here. All right, Charlie Rock. Yes, sir. Charlie Rock, release yourself from your emotional weight. We won't say prison. That's too, that's too deep for me. You know what I mean? We're trying to stay away from that word. So um, when you release your, whatever it was in your lifetime, you know, I'll uh, put it this way. With the situation you dealt with, how did you know you were fully released to that and you were able to move on and have clarity and be able to deal with daily life without even having to worry about that? Well, you know, first and foremost, there, there's no timeline for forgiveness. Um, okay. If you've been hurt by someone else, the individual wants you to get over it, you know, just like that. But you can't hurt somebody fully and then abbreviate their response to it. You know what I'm saying? Because the right. person, it it's takes time for things to for you to get past things. But if the hurt is self-inflicted, oh my God, it's even more difficult because you have to live with whatever consequences you inflicted on yourself or your family or whatever situation. And you have to look yourself in the mirror and, and deal with those things. So it, it's hard, bro. It, it's something that's very difficult to do. When it stops consuming you on a daily basis, then you realize that you're on the road to healing. But at right. the same time, it's important that for the people that need help and they're struggling with anything that they may have done or right. they, they have a situation that, that is consuming them. You know, we did a, a episode on mental health 
right. Um, right. you know, several episodes ago, get the mental health that you need. Go see yeah. someone, sit down, talk to them, talk to a specialist. You have to find a way, you know, again, a path forward to releasing <laughs> yourself. Especially okay. men. It, you know, yep. Mental health issues is not a taboo. It is okay to talk to someone. It's, it is okay to share your feelings. So, you know, we want to make that abundantly clear. Like Charles said, we did do a show on mental health. Uh, go back and check it out. Um, but uh, I'm just glad Charles brought that up. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm glad he brought it up too because uh, for, for a long time, there was the stigmatism in our community of going to a shrink or a quack or whatever they want to call it. And uh, just we really see it, have huh? to talk to it. Huh? I said people just couldn't see it, huh? Going to a shrink. No, 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 they couldn't see it. They couldn't see it. They couldn't see it, but uh, but what I what I wanted to say was that I, I think it's important that you, that you talk to someone, and I think a lot of times, uh, you know, we we didn't really have anybody to go to. We hit, we went to a, a a pastor or a priest or someone who wasn't really well versed in that. You know, I mean, they had counseling thing, but I think that it's okay. It's okay to go see somebody, talk to somebody if you need to get something off your chest, and if, especially if it's going to um, promote a longer life for yourself and not hold that in. You know, I didn't know how serious that was, but when you hold stuff like that, when investors hate can decrease your life. And I didn't know that. I was looking at this, uh, we had a little, a little something at work about childhood trauma. I didn't know that there's certain levels of trauma that can really uh, decrease your life, you oh, know, wow. in regards to you holding on stuff. And it, it blew my mind. I'm like, wow. I said, damn, I, I need to do a lot of releasing, you know. Yeah, get well, it's stress, on. Mike. It's stress. Yeah, you yeah. know, stress is a killer. So absolutely. Press, pressure bust pipes. Yeah, yeah, facts. Facts on that. All right. Well, listen, we, we come to this segment of our show where we do it every now and then. A lot of, um, you know, it's a blast from the past. It's called Drop the Mic. Um, I, I don't know if you gentlemen have anything in your pocket, or, you know, in regards to the mic drop. But if you do, uh, we're going to start <clears throat> off. With, let's start off with my man, uh, Steph Lover. Steph, you got any drop the mic information for us today? Yeah, I do. I do. Um, let's have it. You know, let's have we, it. We're, we're talking about forgiveness. There's probably one person I will probably never be able to forgive, and that's Donald J. Trump. Yo, mm. this man has caused so much recklessness and divide. Now, I'm not blaming him for the COVID-19 response and the fact that we've lost 400,000 people, but I am, am kind of sort of putting it on him and the fact that they didn't have a vaccine plan. Uh, th there's just so much that he, the division that he caused and hatred that he brought out. Um, uh, it, it was good last night to be able to sleep. For the first time in four years, I was able wow. to sleep um, wow, because I knew different. Someone, yeah. someone responsible had the nuclear football. I knew someone yeah. wasn't yeah. going to get on Twitter and embarrass me, my country, and all that you know I've served for. So... Yeah. Yeah, th that one guy and all his, uh, his of his enablers, I'll probably never be able to forgive, uh, and I sure as hell won't ever forget. That's my drop okay. of mind. I'm, right, I'm gonna you, give, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give him to Miss Seely, and uh, you know everything <laughs> he touched from now on is never gonna go right. <laughs> all right, well since since you segued into that, Chuck, uh, what's your drop the mic segment today, Chuck? Hey, man, go to somebody else, man. Somebody's setting off the smoke alarm in my house. <laughs> I don't know if you can <laughs> Yeah, we can hear it. Oh, my God. Hey, Charles, uh, what, what's your drop the mic segment? What do you got for today? Well, I just want to uh, congratulate the Biden and Harris ticket, you know, and okay. emphasize the importance of not getting complacent. I mean, the five of us here on this podcast, we represent in many ways HBCUs, and HBCUs are now under the spotlight because we have a vice president who went to an HBCU. And um, okay. I think it's important that yeah. we just need to continue to give back to our universities. And, um, you know, and also at the same time, demand better of our universities because many of them are still in piss poor shape, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, one situation was highlighted recently. We all know that um, Deion Sanders is now the head football coach at Jackson State. And right. he went to Jackson State and he challenged them because their athletic facilities are piss poor. Right. Piss poor. And that's that's nothing new. But not only are athletic facilities uh, piss poor, but in many cases, 
Uh, we're dealing with poor dormitories. Uh, we need to improve our curriculum. Um, you know, there are computer science courses that are being taught at HBCUs, and these folks aren't even learning the code that is necessary for them to be successful upon graduation. So there's wow. a lot of things that, that is happening on the HBCU front that is good and is being spotlighted, but the fact of the matter is we need to do more. So I just want okay. to use that as my drop the mic segment that we all need to get behind these HBCUs. Okay. Mic drop. All right, y'all, appreciate that. Wayne, yep. Wayne Wonder, yeah. what you got for me about yeah, so, drop the mic? So my, my drop the mic is kind of a little bit like what Steph was saying. Um, what I wanted to say, I think everyone's kind of going uh, down a similar path, but um, I think there's, there's been a sense of relief. Today feels a little bit different than yesterday. Um, it, it feels like there's some promise, there's some hope. Um, we're still in bad shape and, you know, there's no question about it. We, we have a financial crisis pending. We still have this pandemic out of control. Uh, there's a lot of challenges still, but it felt a little bit better knowing that there's not going to be the distractions, the nonsense that we've dealt with for a long time. Right. And so right. I, I just hope that, you know, Again, let's not be complacent about this. Let's, you know, we have a new new people in, pl in place. They still have to be accountable, right? We still have to make sure right. that things are working in the right true, way. True, true. So, so the drop right. the mic is for everybody who's listening. Uh, my my comments is just that, you know, we, we've made it past the first hurdle. We got to keep it moving. Mic okay. Drop. All right, appreciate yes, that. All right, Chuck. Yes, how's sir. That burnt popcorn, how's that burnt popcorn going over there? <laughs> did the alarm go off? You ready? Yeah, we, we, we're good, brother. We're good. We didn't have to call the fire department. We're good. So, uh, what do you got for drop the mic? All right. So, uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, I was a police officer for many years 20 plus years to be exact. Uh, and I uh, am retired. Um, I watched as insurrectionist, excuse me, um, tried to beat a fellow police officer to death. The chant was, kill him. Take his weapon. Kill him with his own weapon. I take that personally. For the Trump supporters, I do not forgive you. This is supposed to be an episode of forgiveness. I'm sorry. I do not. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not sorry. I do not forgive you. Donald Trump emboldened you. You wanted to exterminate me and people that look like me. That was your vision for America. I can't forgive that. If you are a Trump supporter and you have... You know, you still claim to be a Trump supporter. Take that shit to the grave. Don't tell me. Don't tell anyone. Because that's your scarlet letter. That is your cross to bear. You voted for him a second time. You voted for racism. You voted for all the hateful things in this country. I can't forgive that. For my ancestors. I have to move on. I have to move on without you. I have to move forward. And that means I have to expel you, that is the cancer. It's not us. It was never us. It was never black America. We've never tried to harm you. We've only tried to lift you up. Yet you shit on us every time. So from my drop the mic, Trump supporters. Okay. All right. Fair enough. I, I can respect different people's views. I respect it. Um, I'm not going to go that deep. Um, a, le a lot of people were political. Sorry. I'm going to say... The mic. Uh, okay, okay, the mic dropped. Okay. Me. I heard it. I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, I'm not going to get that deep, and I'm going to wrap it up because I know we only got we only uh, a certain amount of time. But um, my my drop the mic is, is thanks. Uh, to be able to be thankful for... Um, to have people in my corner who, who believe in us. We believe in each other. Um, no matter how hard things got or what part that we got to, we were about to, you know, call it a day, uh, people were able to resurge their energy 
and focus and, and put belief in, in what we have. And I, I think, um, you know, I'm very appreciative. Uh, I appreciate that. And I'm very thankful for, for where we're going and what we're doing in this podcast. And, and I just want to say uh, thank you to all, all the members here. These are a long time uh, friends, family, and uh, I hope we continue to, uh, to give the people what they want. Mic drop. And that comes to our last segment. Chuck, you want to take us out? With what you yeah, want to real quick, know? everybody. Make sure you join us after the podcast in our private group where we're going to announce uh, the, the winner of the merchandise and uh, where we're going to have uh, some after conversation. All right. We appreciate everybody for joining us on Just Be a Man. Mike. All right. I just want to say thank you to everybody. And once again, you can find us on all the social media outlets. And don't forget to go to the YouTube channel, like and subscribe. And I told you, take your shopping cart to jbandpod.com and take a look up in there. There might be a t-shirt, there might be a mug, there might be something you might like. And like I said, if the price is too high, I have no problem bringing it down. Deuces. <laughs>